Kristen. Great, thanks, Tara. <laughs> All right, with interest of time, I will kick off our meeting this afternoon. So welcome everyone to the June 6th, 2022 Art and Public Places Committee meeting uh, pursuant to government code section 54953E and recommendation of the health officer of the County of Sonoma. Art and Public Places Committee members will be participating in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Uh, Recording Secretary Eileen, will you please let our, our public know how they can participate in today's meeting? Absolutely. Members of the public wishing to speak during public comment or during any of the schedule items will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature or if calling in by pressing star nine, sorry, star nine on their phone. Um, and then they will then be given the ability to address the committee. Thank you. Great. This time, I would like to take a roll call of committee members. Uh, Eileen, will you please walk us through? Absolutely. Um, so I see that uh, member Asdirian is on. If you could uh, unmute, and we'll just confirm that you are here. <laughs> uh, Nathan, member Asdirian? Yes. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Chair Kiefer? Present. Member Baumgartner? Present. Member Puentes? Present. Member Sayers? Here, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Let the record reflect that all members are present with the exception of Melanie Jones Carter, who will be vice chair, uh, who is absent, and uh, member Jeff Nathanson, who will be at joining the meeting late today. Thank you. All right, next, I would like to ask for public comment. Uh, Eileen, have you received any public comment uh, in advance of today's meeting? I have not. We have no voicemails or emails for this meeting. And do we have any raised hands for people wanting to call in today? We have no raised hands at this time. Okay. I will then move on to item four, approval of minutes. With our agenda today, you should have all received the uh, approval of minutes, meeting minutes from the May 2nd, 2022 meeting. Uh, I would like to review those at this time and approve them before we move on to our next items. So does any, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the May 2nd, 2022 meeting minutes? I would like to make a motion to approve the May 2nd, um, 2022 Minutes um, as submitted. Second that. Great. Thank you, Anne. And Eileen, will you take a roll call vote? Yes, Member Puentes. I, I see you raising your hand. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you made the okay, motion. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Member Estherian. Oops. There we uh, go. Yeah, uh, so moved. Great, uh, Member Baumgartner. Uh, approved, moved. Member Sayers. Approved. Chair Kiefer. Aye, approved. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the um, motion to pass the meeting minutes has passed. Great, moving on to scheduled items five on the agenda. Item 5.1, we have the City of Santa Rosa Equity Framework. Socorro Shields, the City Diversity, Inclusion and Equal Employment Officer will present a framework for equality, diversity, inclusion and belonging and share the equity work being done with the city organization. This presentation is the first of a series of presentations and workshops on this topic. I will now pass the meeting over to Socorro, thank you. Thank you, Tara. I don't know if you want to say anything to start or you just want me would like me to go. Uh, thanks. I, I think you can jump in. Um, I think that the only thing to say other than that is that this is the start of a series of meetings and workshops. Um, 
that uh, is meant to go deeper into the work that the APPC and the public art program can do uh, on this topic surrounding our own practices and how we do projects, um, our policies, etc. So um, this is a, a kickoff to that and Socorro has a lot of background and information on this um, as she's done this work uh, it, with other city pro programs and divisions as well. Um, and she is Thank you for being here today. So we'll go, go forth. Thank you. And I wanna thank all of you as well. Tara's vision and kind of leadership for this, I think really is spot on and will be part of kind of a, a first wave of people and places that are looking to operationalize this work. So that's very exciting. And you all had topics come up right away early in my tenure. Right, I mean, the, the area is so ripe in the discussion of art in public spaces and art in general about these topics. So thank you. Um, if you wanna go to, yeah. I'm gonna go through the PowerPoint first and then I'll go through the handouts um, just to kind of give you a sense. And I really appreciate that Tara also understands that we really are working to do, we are working so that this work is done as a city. And we have 13 departments, police, fire, like lots of people doing lots of great work. And the idea of kind of still keeping a city umbrella as part of these efforts of belonging is really important. Although everyone has unique kind of way that this shows up. So thank you, Tara, again. Next slide, please. So just a couple things we wanna draw out because your future presentations will be with Nico and they'll be very art specific. Well, I don't even know exactly what he has in mind, but it will be very operationalized. Again, this is the broad view of what the city is doing and kind of how your work is related and connected to that. So you'll hear about our equity journey as a city, this group called Seed that we've been working with for over a year, and that's the city at all at large. And then kind of next steps and things that kind of might be where you're going in the future. Next, please. So one of the things that I think is important to recognize is that this work has been going on in the city, might have been some fits and starts and might not have been as global as we would have liked, but the values and um, goals of the city have included this for probably over 10 years. And so kind of the changes in our community, the changes in our society about the language we have, the ever evolving awareness of what this means, not only in terms of how city employees act towards one another, but how we interface and engage with the community and do our work. That's part of this whole spectrum of work within the city. And it is why last year, no, the year before actually, time flies, in 2020, the city council started this position. It was an inaugural position. And at the same time, entered into this contract with the Seed Collaborative, who again, we'll talk about a little later, but I want you to remember that these two things were happening simultaneously. Next, please. So we'll go into the handouts and on there, there's some definitions about equity, diversity, target universalism, and that's a great reference page to hold on to. But one thing about how the city is addressing the issues of equity, there are multiple ways. Some people do it through a racial equity lens. The lens that the city is doing in part be, and was secured through choosing the Seed Collaborative as our consultant um, supporter is called Targeted Universalism. And this is important. It includes racial equity, but it includes other kind of groups as well. And it really is about having a goal that we want everyone to achieve, right? That is the universal goal. But then we understand that different people experience community, experience life, have lived experiences in different ways through different identities. That can be race, that can be gender, that can be sexual orientation. It can be a wide variety of things that cause us to, that are barriers to achieving the universal goals we're seeking. So that idea of targeted universalism 
really is the bigger frame for how the city of Santa Rosa is looking at achieving equity, again, both internally as employees and externally, how we do our work and how our public service shows up and is experienced by the city of Santa Rosa. There is a place called the Othering and Belonging Institute. It's out of Cal if you wanted to Google it and do some reading on your own. There are, there's a whole kind of wave of work being done this way. One of the prominent speakers, his name is John Powell, and it really is an idea about how does this get longevity? How does this idea of equity not create further division, but really bridge all of us together and have us all working towards a better common good? So that really is, again, the, the specific framework that the city of Santa Rosa is using. And there's also, I have, and I didn't draw this out, so I do want to make note of it. Equity SR on the city website is a place where you can go and watch city council meetings when we discuss this. There's some links for seed who they are, the work they do. There's some links to some articles on targeted universalism, if you so choose. If you want to go down and do some more research, there are places to find that. And I just wanted to make that available to you. Next, please. I think one thing many of you might have seen this visual, one thing we know that equality <clears throat> is giving everyone the same. And so that first picture is treating everyone equally, right? Everyone gets that little box. But as we can see made clear by that visual, not everybody needs the same thing. Some people might already have access some people, it, do, it might provide them access and others, it's still by making it equal, not giving people what they need. So the idea is to give people exactly what they need. Again, really target solutions, target the ways we're addressing these issues to people's lived experiences and stated needs and offering them that. But this our idea of targeted universalism goes even beyond that because what we're seeking is that everybody really feels a part of what's happening, a part, not a part, but a part of what's happening in that sense of belonging, right? Even more than inclusion, we'll get to that on the uh, definitions page that it shows a little bit more of that nuance. But belonging is not only kind of being in the fold and being part of everything that's going on, but also having power and voice in the decisions that are being made. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Next, please. So this data comes from the planning department and their general plan process, which we go through every 10 years. And I think it's called Santa Rosa Forward. I hope that you can learn more about that if you haven't already, because their work for making sure that that's done through an equity lens also is informing us. And I'll speak to that again a little bit later as well. But one of the important things to remember in our city and in, in our county, in our region, is that everyone experiences Santa Rosa differently. And so again, part of those targets is recognizing that, understanding that, seeking to learn what that means. And as we create solutions to belonging, that we're incorporating those differences. And so this data is from the general, again, the general plan process, and it's from different places, but it really does show that by race, Again, not the only lens, but one of the lenses we have for data is because some data we don't collect in terms of um, sexual orientation or gender identity. It would be harder to know those differences without having more qualitative research. But this quantitative research shows us the difference in life lived experiences in the city of our own residents. And again, taking that into account as we think about whatever it is we're trying to do together. Next, please. Again, this is from the portrait of Sonoma. Many of you might have heard that. It was a couple of years ago, then it got revisited. We know through multiple sources, whether it's the Latino scorecard by Los Cien, whether it's the United Way real cost measure, 
that live, everybody who lives in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County has a different experience by, by many different uh, parts of their identity, but acknowledging that that is true is the first step in creating broader solutions to forward progress and forward movement from engagement to decision-making and everything in between, funding, all of those things. Next, please. I don't know how many of you have seen the social determinants of health, but it's a public health framework that says like health as we know it, the broad category is really influenced by a broad number of things. And one of the things that's really important for the city to recognize as employees, as residents of our city is that so much of what local government does and local government meaning our city really influences and impacts the social determinants of health for our community. And so I put the little star in there to really probably highlight where so much of the artwork might be, but there are also broader things. I was looking at it again today with fresher eyes and thought about educational opportunity and economic opportunity because art isn't just like us seeing it, but it's all the decisions that go behind it about who we support in providing the art, who are the creators, who are the makers, the voices and they have in decision making. So really also again from the planning department doing such great work, but the idea that what the city does really impacts the quality of life for residents. And sometimes it's not as visible because, you know, local government can quietly plot along and you don't necessarily see that where pavement, where the streets are paved, where there's sidewalks, where there are lights, um, where there's Wi-Fi access, who gets access to vouchers for housing, the homelessness issue and how that impacts different parts of our community. Water quality, we're very fortunate here, but water quality, all of those different things come together and are in the hands, much of it in the hands of the policies and practices that are done at the local city level. Next, please. So really, when you think about it, we have this tremendous opportunity in front of us, right, to really do amazing things that, that move us in the direction of our shared goals of the community want, we want and the way we want to experience Santa Rosa. And it really is about unlocking and bridging and bringing people together. Next, please. So really, it's about intentionally creating this culture of belonging. Like, what, how do we do that? How do we do that in our meetings? How do we do that as we draw people together in our funding? All of those different things. And there's not like a guidebook or a checklist. We really have to think about what does it mean to us and our kind of unique part of this local government system. Really thinking about innovation, because perhaps the way we've done it in the past needs to be reviewed and revised. Maybe it doesn't, maybe we double down on it. Maybe we, we're doing exactly the right thing, but we've intentionally looked at it and made sure that the process and the outcomes reflect what we want to see in our community in terms of diversity, in terms of belonging, in terms of equity. And then really, again, being very intentional about the diversity of voices, of lived experiences, of ways of thinking, how we bring that in to all of our processes, discussions, outcomes. Again, every part of the like government pie gets this baked into the recipe of how we're doing our work. Next, please. So this is the Seed Collaborative. Again, you can Google them, they have a website. And what they were asked to do when they came to work with the city is create an equity plan. And in doing so, they did it by working with three groups. One was FIRE on diversification of the workforce in FIRE. One was police, creating an equitable police system reinforcing that, taking the work that our police force has done and really amplifying it and taking us to the next level. And then a comprehensive city equity plan. And so to do that, they worked with each of those three groups. They worked with fire and police first, 
And those groups, their recommendations are rolling into the city group now. And the hope is that by the end of August, there'll be an equity plan that will go before the city council for support and then really thinking about, okay, what are the strategies we do first to move us towards these goals? Next, please. This is a visual for that targeted universalism. Again, I mean, you can kind of see it from the language, right? The universalism is everybody do the same thing for everybody. And this is saying, well, we want the same goals for everybody, but how we do it, we're going to have to be specific. And that's the targeted part. So thinking about specifically what groups of people who have had different experiences, what they might need to get to that universal goal. But I think this visual has helped me. Maybe it helps you. I'm a visual learner. And you're visual people, I think, many of you in the art world. So it's like, yay, <laughs> hopefully it's helped. Next, please. Again, there were three different groups for the seed work. And there was different facilitation. So each of them had, ha, well, I'll say has, because the city equity task force is still moving forward. Again, we're still in the throes of our work. And their members from the equitable policing task force in there and from the fire task force in there. But each group had about 20 employees. And this really is about the voice of employees saying, this is what we want for our city. And the seed group is really facilitating the process to get a collaborative agreement on what this is, what's been in our way and how we overcome that. We've made sure to have diverse voices, diverse departments, uh, you know, particular, well, I'd say for all parts, but police and fire are quite hierarchical. So sometimes, well, there is a chief and then there, are, you know, positions underneath, we made sure to have a cross section of voices and create and assure that the space allows for everyone to have voice and power in the discussions. And the same has been true for the city. Next, please. So what will come out of that eventually will be one, this kind of incorporating all of this, the diversity, the equity, belonging, access into all parts of our ecosystem as a city. And as you know, there's everything from employees to our committees, to our councils. They're all different types of processes and groups that we bring together. How do we make sure that's that's visible and, and obvious really in the way we're doing our work. It's evolving and changing all the time. I mean, we can really see in a short course for in the last two years, the ways in which language and consideration and awareness has evolved quickly around topics of diversity, inclusion, anti-Blackness, systemic racism, all of these things that we really have to consider as we move forward, there'll be ongoing training opportunities for residents like yourself who help and participate in these types of things. And Tara helped ensure that would happen, as well as really for city employees, city leadership for all of us as we grow together. And ideally, like cross sectional and cross sector, right? So it's not just the city, it's not just the county, it's our business community, it's our nonprofit community, it's our school community, all really having these discussions together. Again, looking at those social determinants of health, we all have a role to play, right? In ensuring that this is the city we all want and believe it to be. We'll be collecting data, holding ourselves accountable to really making these changes, multiple opportunities to participate in different ways. One you might have heard about for example, was the county and their ARPA process and the way in which they use the community to think about where investments go in the future. All of those types of things really is where we want the future to be. And then strengthening equity SR, again, that website I referred to earlier, referenced earlier, 
like really having that be a more comprehensive site where people can see what's going on as we talk about equity for the city, what that means. Hopefully there'll be more momentum once the plans are done. Uh, next, please. And then there's you all and the work you're doing and the ways in which equity can influence and inform your work. So just some ideas kind of as a systems equity thinker and everything's about pacing and timing and when it's right, but really taking an active role and being leaders in the conversations in our community about how art creates a sense of belonging, how that those place-based strategies really are important in kind of creating a sense of belonging and welcoming and um, a statement about what we value. Uh, and, and that is really is in your lane and your wheelhouse. Um, take an active role in disrupting power structures. Whose decisions, whose voices, who is being uplifted? Who has been silenced? How do we make sure we're bringing new voices and perspectives forward to be part of these discussions? Increasing representation, we know that matters. What does diversity look like? And is it seen as an experience across all parts of our city? We know we have many little micro communities and that there are different vibes and different um, opportunities to experience art in all of those. Do we have diversity in them, across them, through them, in all those different types of ways? Proclaim your commitments. What are your values? What matters to you? Lead the way in saying that and creating a trail, a written documented trail, because we are government, of what that means and, and why that matters and how that centers and grounds your work. And then one of the things we really are trying to do too is all learn together. So there are emerging tools, we'll go over some of them today, that are coming out from different parts of the city. How can you learn about them, incorporate them where they work, when they work, for the work you're doing so that we're growing stronger together and learning how to do this together. And likewise, that your work will influence the rest of the city that we learn from your leadership here in this group about what it means and your journey and how you kind of document it and create it and normalized and operationalized this work for your committee. I think that's my last slide. Are there any questions before I go over the documents? I have a question. Great. Uh, Tara mentioned that you have worked with several other boards and committees to date. Uh, which um, committees are you still have not yet presented to? Um, there are a couple I have not yet presented to. I mean, not to call them out and put them on the spot, <laughs> but there are some <laughs> and, you know, part of it is timing on people's agendas and getting everything they need to do. So I know that it's coming, uh, but I do think you guys have been at the forefront. And again, because your area lends itself to the immediacy of these discussions, because it's come up and because you care about it and it's a value of yours and because the community cares and it's a value of theirs and it can be expressed through some of the art decisions that you're making. So again, I wanna be at every one of the meetings because I think again, collectively, everyone has a role to play from you know, community services, housing, public service. I mean, we all have a role to play public service and safety in, make, in ensuring that these are enacted values on all of our parts. And it's a journey, right? Democracy is a little messy. We're, we're coming to consensus together. And in a government role, you do it in public. And so kind of having important conversations that have been not undertaken in government, right? To talk about race, to talk about diversity, to talk about institutional and systemic uh, oppression. We don't, we don't talk about that. That isn't really something normal we do. And so it's not easy to do all the time. And we don't want to do something that would ever hurt someone's feelings or 
you know, say the wrong thing. And so doing that together uh, will take practice. Thank you. I think my question was more poised. Where are you in terms of presenting to different boards and committees? And you did answer that, so thank you. Uh, I would like to open it up to any other of our committee members for questions to Socorro. And then we'll still go over the handouts just a to... week, oh, right. Okay, um, can you pull up the uh, handout from Seed, please, on the shared screen? It's the second handout, or first handout, second document. Or maybe- Elaine, do you have it? I can, oh, there you go. Thank you. So this is a document that we created. Again, as the city embarked on this, we didn't have a common language either. Right, so we really had to make some notes and put it out there when we say this word, this is what we mean. And this is basic, it's not really in depth, but it really does give you, show you some of the nuances about equity, right? That things are just and fair, that you can't predetermine things based on somebody's zip code or color of skin or things like that, that really should not impact, but yet they do the outcomes that are happening in our lives. Again, this discussion of targeted universalism, a universal goal, but targeted strategies to get there, recognizing the differences and lived in lived experiences, belonging, seeing that as inclusion plus, right? We talk about inclusion, but inclusion can be kind of pass passive. Right, belonging really is people have agency in their belonging, that they're part of co-creation, that sharing of power. Again, inclusion, I've heard the saying like being invited to the dance. Yeah, that's what I think, the, that's what I think the metaphor is. And then belonging is like having a say in what music is played, right? that there is a sharing of power in the decision-making. And then the diversity, right? Really thinking about that in a really broad lens. They're both things that we're born with that are part of that diversity. And then things that we acquire, class and other things that might be acquired um, later. And so understanding the broad spectrum of diversity and thinking about that as we really do want to create the conditions that allow that to happen in our experiences. Next document, please. Um, the chair asked about where, you know, where's the equity trail passing through? And one of them has been with the charter review process. And so the charter review process, Santa Rosa is a charter city. Therefore it has like a constitution that's called its charter. The city council uh, selected members of the community to serve in a group that were um, suggesting recommendations back to the council about what should be included or changed. And early in the process, two things happened. One, the council really strove, strive, strove to create a diverse group of people. So ages, parts of the city that they represent, professions, ethnicity, all of the above, right? To really create a comprehensive conversation. That group early on wanted to have equity principles that would center and guide their work as they had really, you know, a bunch of strangers come together to discuss important things about the future of our city. And so this went through a couple of iterations, but it gave them shared values, some norms about their work, and then principles that they wanted to have embedded in their work. And so this was important for them as they, again, 
were all exploring work they'd never done before. I get this charter review process only happens every 10 years. So it's really unlikely that anybody here was involved a decade ago. And so how to help frame like what could be spicy and dicey conversations about important topics and give them a North Star to agree to and ground their work as they move forward through it. They recently concluded this and presented their recommendations to council. I think it was the last council meeting, in fact, or maybe the one before, but recently. So I helped them, assisted them kind of really create guiding principles for their work. And that's one of the ways, again, that we're operationalizing it. We're leaving a legacy. So the next group that comes in 10 years will have these documents to talk about what was important to them and measure the changes and what they wanna do next. The last handout, please, the priority areas. So I've talked a lot about the great work that's happening in our long-term planning department. And for people who don't recognize the long-term, well, even short-term, but long-term planning really is so critical to the future of the city as it makes decisions about zoning and land use which you don't often think about until you think about, like where are our grocery stores? Where are retail? Where are our homes? What types of homes are we zoning for? And so to ensure that that general plan, again, was very equitable, they have had, one, they have a, we're fortunate with support from Kaiser to have a health equity planner, Beatriz Guerrero, who I hope can speak to this group in the future, because she has done groundbreaking work in terms of thinking about how we engage with community and how we have to really ensure that all parts of our community are reached. This is an example of a map that shows like where we really need to take active steps to include voices, that the old processes we have had have not been good enough to ensure that all parts of our community can be at the table. And so she has plans and there's other work that I can send that define those communities and some strategies for outreach. But I wanted to make sure you saw that there is work going on across the community, I'm sorry, across the organization about how to really bring all voices forward in these important discussions we're having about the future of our city, the art in our city, the place-based strategies for safety and belonging and pride really in our community. So I wanted to share some of these documents with you as well in terms of tools that really help, that are helping us as a city move forward. I think that's the end. Are there more questions, comments, thoughts? Again, this will just be a launching pad for you. The work you'll do with Nico, I'm sure, again, I don't know what's in his brain. He's so creative. So I don't want to like say something that he won't be doing. But what I know is it'll take you deeper down the lane you're in and the decisions you have in front of you, both kind of in the forefront, but that'll come in the future and how you embed those issues of equity, belonging and diversity into all of your discussions, decisions, investments. Yes. I just want to say thank you for all this information. It's great. I was reading it a few days ago and going through it all, and um, it really allowed me as a member to be able to, where should I focus? What am I, you know, what am I going to focus on? Um, where are the issues, you know, when these issues that are there, what has happened and what is happening. And I just, all the information, I just really appreciate it. And it definitely gave me a deeper understanding and better ideas on how to move forward. Great. Yes. Hi, first of all, I, I apologize for uh, joining the meeting a little bit late. I had another meeting, um, but um, heard almost all of the presentation. I really appreciate that the um, city of Santa Rosa is um, has embarked on this process 
uh, in the arts community. Our, our, um, our museum is a member of several national and statewide um, arts and museum associations. And in the cultural community, this is really important work that was started years ago. Uh, there was a concern that many of us had that um, sort of the general public, municipalities, and um, other government entities may not embrace the concept of diversity, inclusion, uh, equity, and accessibility to the same degree the culture, uh, cultural community has. But um, I'm, I'm really glad to see this. I think it's really important information and, and great work. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think we actually have a lot. We owe a lot in the presence of this conversation in government to these cultural conversations and cultural institutions who really have been in the forefront and who have had the, you know, courage to bring these conversations and continue to have them. So in many ways, the, the work that you're doing does help fuel the equity work for the entire city because it, again, shows its importance in things like place-based strategies, which some people, you know, in other departments, you might think, oh, well, it's just, but there, there's always deep thought and deep discussion in how we're making these decisions, particularly with public funds and the way in which we can deepen these conversations. So thank you for all the work that everyone in this group has done, both collectively here, but I'm sure in your own professional lives before here. Yes. Hey, um, also, thank you. Um, I wanted to dovetail on something that I've been thinking a lot about, and I bet you would have something to say about this. I took the um, art train training through, um, which is kind of a, was that through Tara? Who, who sponsored that? It's through a partnership with Creative Sonoma yeah, on yeah. the Art Surround project. Right. And it was just talking about getting funding and keeping, and that was at the forefront of everything. They were coming out of the Midwest, Minneapolis area, Wisconsin. That were guiding it on a Zoom. And um, it was different people from around the county. But what just kept coming up was just the communication was so important. I mean, when we sit down to these kind of decision making processes or anything we're doing, that we have a pre discussion about what would constitute success and for everyone, and everyone buys into it. I and mean, that is a step that I am, um, I'm not, and I was a teacher for years, it just wasn't something that was part of entering into things. It was kind of like do it and then maybe evaluate it later. But as for setting goals and hearing from everyone first and then returning to those things along the way and at the end, it just hit me like that's a lot of work, but also you can just really avoid a lot of problems and potentially leaving people out along the way if we can have those conversations. So I just, I have a lot to learn about that. And I'm hoping that that sort of training will be along the way, you know, for everyone that's doing this kind of work. Well, and I think too, that's another place to really lean into the the power of the whole organization so again in this general plan work that's happening simultaneously and it's a three-year process yeah. it's very comprehensive they've talked to so many groups about what's the vision you have for the future of Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. And so they have collected data on yeah. the language that people are using, on the vision that people have for the city of Santa Rosa. So even having inviting Beatriz to come and speak about that, about so that we're all learning and everybody doesn't feel like they have to take their own bite at the apple because one, first of all, residents are like, didn't you just ask me that? <laughs> like, where did, <laughs> where did that go? And then kind of really crossing our own kind of departmental silos. And we yeah, really yeah. are stronger and better when we're all working together within the city, the city organization, and then mm -hmm. within the city, the city community. Right, right. So there is lots of great learnings to have, not that there won't, shouldn't be more focus groups or continued conversation, but we have some great information to yeah. share about what residents of our community are looking for. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. I see that Nico's on too. Yeah, Nico, let's have you come on and say hi just really quick. So it'll be a preview of things to come. <laughs> hello, hello. I did not know I was gonna be on camera. So thankfully I did my hair. <laughs> we are here. Socorro, good to be in the Zoom room with you. Hi everyone. My name is Nico Kimson from Kimson Creative. So thankful to be here. I was just watching on the other side. 
um, and really getting the overview of the strategy of, you know, starting large at the 30,000 foot view. Um, and really excited to work with you all on some training and some mentorships on um, activating the strategy, right? I think we start from this place of why, and then we move into how we might activate that. Um, so I'm really excited to, um, to be with you all in community and do that. And I think that the thing that I'll say that I'm super excited about as artists, right? Arts and cultural workers are really um, the creators of culture. And our, and our job is to really create a more inclusive culture and really this process, you know, how to create a, a process of community self-determination where we listen to our arts and culture workers' dreams, listen to their obstacles, and then how do we develop an art making process and policies to honor them? Um, so I think that's what we'll be doing, starting with this pass off from Socorro about strategy and really how we go after these areas to love on, how we listen to our artists, and then how we really utilize the strengths of art and art making to, to carry out this vision from the city. So more to come. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like. No, thank you so much, Socorro. That was a wonderful presentation, very informative. Um, it's great to have you be a part of our team here supporting the work that we're doing. So thank you, thanks to Nico, and we'll look forward to continuing these. We'll probably be setting up, like I've said before, some special meetings to start a series of workshops over the summer, so. Um, I'm very excited and very proud for the work this group is doing, and I'm really excited to be, you know, watching and supporting and championing this work in any way I can. Thank you so much. Um, Kristen, the committee is welcome to continue a conversation. Just a reminder to call for public comment uh, before we move on to the next item. Great. Thanks for the reminder, Tara. Uh, at this time, I will ask the recording. Eileen, our recording secretary, are there any public comments that um, were sent in for this item or are there any uh, members of the public who wish to speak at this time? We have no voicemails or emails for this item uh, and we do not currently have any hands raised. Great, thank you for reporting back. Uh, I just wanted to say that I very much appreciate seeing the uh, kind of these definitions spelled out in a lot of ways and how we can um, bring in a level of intentionality to um, at least our, our, our decision making in our, um, our discussions during our meetings. So I, I am very happy that we are uh, having this presentation today and look forward to our future workshops on these items. Thank you, everyone. And does anyone else have any item or conversation that they would like to bring forward to this group on this item regarding our equity framework program? Uh, seeing none, I would like to move us forward into our item 5.2, annual work plan discussion part two. Staff to continue the discussion about the annual work plan process uh, with sharing follow up materials requested by the committee at our May 2nd meeting. Thank you, and I will hand over the meeting to Tara. Great. Thank you, Kristen, and thank you, everyone. I'll go ahead and share my screen with the presentation. Um, can everybody see that okay? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, as uh, Kristen just read from the agenda, this is the second part of uh, an annual work plan discussion that was uh, initiated at the last meeting in May. And um, Jessica and I uh, have prepared some follow up items um, to present to you and in, in service of furthering that conversation. Um, first, just wanted to start off by sharing a reminder of the um, kind of progress report of how we're doing with implementing our strategic plan in this first full year of implementation. I shared this at the last meeting. Um, we can come back to this at any point if it's helpful to review, uh, but really wanted to move on to kind of what was asked for um, by committee members at the last meeting. 
Uh, this is one one attempt to indicate um, access points or points of engagement where the community can be involved with our work areas. So this is that diagram of work areas. Um, I've added some red asterisks to indicate at, at, at what, which areas there are um, kind of those access points. So this kind of shows where uh, the committee mem uh, community members can be engaged in whatever is happening with those areas. So um, there's, there's probably more kind of nuances to this, but this was just an attempt to insert another level, layer of information onto this diagram. Uh, I also just made one small note to change that the um, the blue advisory bodies category is also inclu inclusive of the committee as it's not really the same as other advisory uh, bodies. It really is a, a separate committee that has its own authority as, as was pointed out at the last meeting. Um, so that's kind of offered up for conversation or um, just to kind of respond to what the committee um, has said. Um, I'll keep moving on unless there's a question specifically about this and then we can have a grander conversation in a little bit if that's okay. Um, so then this is, there's a, four pages here that are an attempt to describe the work area diagram that I just had on the screen in a little bit more linear format. So these um, capture, these pages capture the four main work areas. So this is for the public art work area. And then on the far left column is like the focus areas. And then a brief summary, a timeline, um, which we've tried to capture. A lot of the programs are ongoing, um, but then some projects have specific and individual timelines. And then what, what current examples of those things are, are underway right now, just to give you an idea. Um, so this has been prepared for the, like I said, the four main work areas. This is for the out there San Rosa area. Then we have the event permitting work area and other work areas. Now these two last pages are really included, not necessarily for um, involvement from the committee, but just as an awareness that these work areas are also a part of our uh, staff's time, my staff time and our other staff's time. So it does take away some of our availability. Um, just, just to keep that in mind that there are other things going on in the, in the scope of the bigger picture. And then this document is um, an attempt to capture some of the ideas that we could come up with for appropriate program areas or work areas that the committee members could be more involved in. So I kind of see um, more conversation perhaps centering around this document as a place to talk about what committee members are interested in um, and how you feel like you could interface with some of these tasks. So um, the first, First item is really getting the word out about programs. Most programs are ongoing, but um, public engagement is appropriate really at only certain stages of the project. Um, and we can be proactive in communicating those opportunities for public engagement with the APPC so that there is a little bit more awareness from the beginning of a project when, um, when those appropriate times are. So for our current projects, the next opportunities really are to get the word out about the Fifth Street mural being installed and when we are going to be holding a dedication event. Um, the Live at Juilliard concert series coming up. The Arts Round projects in San Rosa, which there'll be more information um, this summer coming out about those projects and their timelines. Um, there are rotating exhibits at Finley and the Person Senior Wing. And um, are not public places, uh, committee members are welcome to check out out there Santa Rosa features through social media. And, um, and then kind of related to getting the word out is communicating to the public what the APPC does in general. So it's less project specific, but more what the committee's role is and how the public can participate in public meetings. So we've talked a little bit about hosting meet and greets or open houses, um, specifically about the work that each task force is doing, but also uh, in general about the committee. 
um, there are other events, community organized events, where our public places committee could have a presence and talk to the community members at those events. Um, program areas that we will need assistance in the near future include the art audit project. Um, that's one of our strategic plan projects. We'll be undertaking that soon. So really um, a question for this section is which programs or which areas interest you? And then, you know, how we might move forward with either doing the work that is interesting to committee members through the task forces that already exist, or if it's just a matter of um, signing up for something, or if new task forces or new subcommittees are called for in any particular situation. I think really all solutions are on the table to try to activate um, the APPC in this work. Um, and then um, also on this document is, oops, sorry, that went way too fast, is a, um, uh, the, a whole kind of different area where committee members could be involved, which is in the idea of developing the toolkits. This is another area, another project that's called for in our strategic plan that's really about resources, um, developing toolkits um, that are intended to provide direction resources, easy step-by-step -step instructions for things like how to do murals, either on private or public property, um, public events where you might need permits or to toilets delivered or garbage cans delivered. Um, what other resources do we need the public, do we think the public needs to be connected to, such as grant opportunities, access to uh, free cultural community, cultural and community events and anything else that may come to mind. And then what are some public art program partnerships that could be included in this idea of the toolkits? Um, the partners that we already have, what do they offer that could be helpful to community members wanting to do public art projects? So um, so this is this was really meant as a kickoff for a conversation about um, areas where APPC could be more involved. So I think I'll pause there and maybe we could um, chat a little bit about the, the, this topic so far and I can answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Tara. I'm gonna open up discussion to our committee. Does anyone have any questions or comments that they would like to kick off our, our, our discussion with this afternoon? Hi, Lisa. Hi. Um, so, so some of these are great ideas. I love the um, the APPC as attend South Park or Roseland community events and just be present and um, make ourselves available to the to the community. And I also like the assist with organizations, open house, or other public art events too. And um, so usually in that certain situation, there's artists within that area. And so to make ourselves um, available, you know, present and available there, I think would be excellent idea too. Um, yeah, and I do like the toolkit too. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> And definitely can be a benefit for many people who have these ideas and who are artists but just don't know how to take the next step. Great, thanks, Lisa. Go ahead, Ann. Um, I'm curious about how we brand ourselves. Like, if you're somewhere, do we have like a? Is it involved like a little tent thing, or is it involved like wearing, getting some T-shirts or some kind of way that? You know, I'm just saying, you know, in a public event, like, who are you? Um, you know, just having to not have to start from zero. I don't know what's effective. So I'm just figuring it out as like how we're, is there any suggestions on that kind of idea? And the other question I had, um, minor questions, um, is there a, um, is this the calendar or is there a calendar that's sort of comprehensive that we could um, sort of see things rolling out in chronological time in terms of, not missing things. A uh, calendar of? Like when some of these things are, or do we just need to decide if we want to do them? I mean, I. Yeah, the only thing that's scheduled on this um, list currently are the Live at Juilliard concert series. Gotcha. Um, so all the other things on here, while we're working on a date and time 
for the new garage mural um, dedication event that has not been set up yet. So if there are committee yeah. members that specifically want to work with us on planning that, um, yeah. please reach out to Jessica and I, because that's a, a very immediate need. We need to start planning that yeah. now. Um, mm -hmm. And, but everything else on here is really kind of a su suggestions and food for thought um, and can be scheduled, but not necessarily scheduled. I guess the things that are that that I shouldn't I should go back a second. Um, I believe the community events that are referred to on this list, like the South Park or Roseland community events. I don't know exactly if we were referring to specific events or if it's just in general, there are events in those neighborhoods. So that's something that right. um, we we can, I, I can clarify, but, and maybe Jessica, you helped put this together. Do you, do you know, were you thinking of specific events there or is that just in general? I was just thinking about it more in general to get out there into the events that are already taking place. Um, I live in South Park, so there's, I know that there's an event here like every other weekend through the um, South Park Neighborhood Coalition, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to add to while we have live at Juilliard on the calendar, we also always have the um, the rotating art exhibits at Finley and Person Senior Wing. So I think what we'll do is I'll start telling you about those during these meetings, and then I'll follow up with an email so we have it on everyone's radar. And to address some of your other oh sorry, Raisa, go ahead. Oh, I think you might be touching on this um, branding. Um, and how to show up. Uh, so I'll let you do it. Oh, okay. You well, I, I'm, I would love to get more creative in how we do it. So what I'm going to say is just total basic building blocks, <laughs> and then we can go yeah. anywhere from there. Um, at one point before COVID, all committee members had a name tag that they were encouraged to wear out to events. So if we don't have one for all of our current members, we can get them to you. And um, that is something where at least you're wearing something that looks somewhat official and it says your name and that you're a member of their Armed Public Places Committee. So that's helpful in um, not having to introduce yourself a million times or explain um, why you're there <laughs> a million times, even though you still may do that. Um, but that's one thing. And then, yeah, I, I don't think we've ever had, the committee has never had a formal presence or booth or table or, you know, pop-up tent, but those are things that we can definitely provide. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, it's thinking through, okay, well, in a given year, what kind of event presence does the committee want to have? What types of events will we be going out to? Does it make sense to have a pop-up mm -hmm. tent that says Art in Public Places Committee or Public Art Program, the logo? Um, you know, are there are there are there more things we want to have swag or things like that? I think that we have um, um, a great kind of um, now collaboration with Out There Santa Rosa and kind of merging the public art program with some of the look and feel of Out There. And so there's a great opportunity to do some some projects there where there could, could be um, branding outcomes that kind of help with a, a visual branding of our art in public places. And we can certainly put um, do t-shirts with the Art and Public Places logo as well, which I think would be um, nice to have. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, um, actually, it's, it's, it's really nice to be having this conversation because um, it uh, it's come up in our community engagement task force uh, conversations to a certain degree. and. Um, um, I think I may have mentioned this at the last meeting um, when I was out at the um, Mary Lou Lowrider event. It, it occurred to me that there's there could be a tie-in that um, to public art. That, I mean, you could kind of look at it as okay, um, this is a public event, and the the uh, Lowrider and, and custom cars and the music and everything that was uh, out there at the event. You just kind of look at it and go. Yeah, this is this is really cool. And the um, now I know that it was the Office of Community Engagement in the Police Department primarily, but I I couldn't help but think, well, there's a public art angle to this as well, and so um, I I'm just feeling like this is something that um, I should bring to uh, Melanie and the um, Community Engagement Task Force and. If uh, this group has any um, 
I guess, further recommendations or, or ideas about how the community engagement group should maybe um, dig into this a little bit more. I'd, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> dovetailing off of Jeff's comments uh, I just wanted to um, also think about uh, our music festivals as opportunities for public art opportunities and that you know thinking holistically about public art and we want to celebrate our not only our makers but our performers and um, the varying experiences that we have here and for example, uh, next weekend, I will be volunteering with the Railroad Square Music Festival. And um, I want to tie in art in public places as, uh, or just to acknowledge that that is a celebration of art in public place as well. And um, so if, if there could be more um, kind of, I don't know, uh, just a little bit more collective of, hey, I, I'm interested in this and I would like to um show up and um, show our committee's support by uh, inserting ourselves in the community more in these events um i think i will dig out my old uh name tag if i can find it um but uh, i i'm very happy to see this list put together of suggested areas for us to be getting more involved in, in our work areas so thank you for bringing this conversation back for our committee today. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm we're happy. I'm happy to keep talking about this if there's other questions or desires to be more involved. But I think it sounds like um, having an actual list of events. Um, and I, I would I would also ask that committee members, if you are participating in an event or you know an event, send them my way because then I think that we can create something that is a little bit more comprehensive. Um, and then I think when we get to the point of saying, okay, well, you know, is it, sh should the, how should the decisions be made about who um, and if the committee should be present at an event? So should that live in the engagement task force? Um, you know, is that something that, that Jeff and Melanie could take on to um really look at those lists of events and say okay well do we want to participate in all of these and then create a sound a sign up and then we can provide you with a table and the pop-up and the chair you know whatever you know so it's, it's kind of working out that process that i think um would be the next step for that it, as it sounds like that's the main area that committee members are interested in participating in um sorry lisa go ahead no that's fine and what you're saying is basically what, what i was kind of asking or you know, be talking about too and it is it just you know we can go ahead and participate but i mean we need to have also this branding of you know the appc and we need to be presenting that and showing that so people remember and people know and um so i just want to make sure that's going to be something when we start doing the, being present in these events that we're going to have that to to surround us and you know make a bigger pre presence by having that. Um, so whether it be, you know, a table or, um, you know, the swag or just have information so we can give that to individuals that want more information that want to learn more. Um, so I just definitely think um, we, this all has to, to be able to attend these events and be part of these events, we probably need to have all that other um, physical tangible items ready to yeah and, for sure yeah I, I i agree with that i would also say and that's something that we can definitely work on i think that i would also say that just individuals going to community events and talking to people i mean that that is effective too it's just slightly different you know different approach it's not um a table that people are coming up to to get information from or to interact it's less official but um, don't don't let it stop you from going to events and saying, hey, I'm a member of the Art and Public Places Committee. Oh, you don't know what that is? Well, let me tell you. I mean, you know, it can it can be fun. <laughs> uh, Nathan? Yeah, um, I, I was just thinking uh, that when we are interacting with the public in that way, it would probably be good to be very clear about the kind of resources that we have available to offer to the community. 
um, it's, and it seems to me like that should be a priority um, because as nice as it is to, you know, sort of go out and engage with people in an informal way, uh, I think there is a kind of uh, question about like, you know, how resources are allocated and, 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 you know, how we can help or make ourselves useful. Um, and maybe we should press that in our interactions with people. I don't know, yeah, I thought. think in particular, when we have toolkits ready to go, I think um, that will be, I mean, I, I feel like we can start planning for all of this uh, now and get things ready. But one of those things will be the toolkit project. And so when there are toolkits ready to be launched, I think that um, having a, a really great robust schedule of all these community events that we can show up to to promote that, um, that would be a really effective way to get the word out about it. Jeff? Yeah, and you know, um, I'm thinking about it because the, um, it, a lot of this has to do with what are the resources are available, the capacity that this committee and, and um, and Tara and staff have uh, to um, kind of set things up, but um, our museum is uh, trying, it, is actually making a very proactive effort to get out to more community events. We were just at the um, Pride Festival, for example, over the weekend with a, with a booth and hands-on art activities. And um, in our feminist art exhibition, we had very, uh, uh, you know, very, clearly related uh, content that we we're able to do some printed posters and put information up about queer artists who were in the show and and some of the that content that kind of made sense to um, represent what we were doing at the pride festival and it makes me think that well if APPC is going to get out um, then if we have a project that we can promote or if there is um, uh, a community-based art project that we're trying to recruit people for. If we have something a little bit more specific that we can share with the public, it actually will make our presence there that much more effective. And um, also thinking about how it might take a while for us to get that all together, I think it would be um, okay. I mean, I'd I'm the one who can grant permission for um, APPC or anybody else to put some literature out on the museum's table, but I'd be glad to do that, uh, to just you know, share. Uh, we're gonna be at the Juneteenth event, for example, coming up. And so if a APPC wants some information to be at the Juneteenth festival, then I'll put it out at the, uh, at the museum's booth. I I'd be happy to do that. Thanks, Jeff. Question. Yeah, go um, ahead. Ann. What form is the toolkit going to have in terms of interfacing with people? Is it a link that's going to be like, uh, you know, some sort of they could have to go online to figure all the resources out? Um, or is it a physical thing? Or how does that work? Sorry, which? Uh, just the toolkits. Like what? Oh, form? The toolkits. Okay. I'm just curious, like, what form someone would interact when those are done? How do you present them? Or is it strictly online resources? Um, yeah, so we we don't have this completely figured out yet, but what the initial thoughts are, um, would be to have it, it essentially be a digital toolkit that's accessible mm -hmm. through a website. Um, all of the resources, links to places, um, applications, uh, how to's would be kind of all, the, all there. However, we would, definitely print some copies in English and Spanish um, and have translation services available for other languages as well for folks that would need it um, non-digital. Um, but, but I also think that there's probably components of it, of the toolkit packet itself that could be like one sheet flyers that you would hand out at an event or, you know, like I, I think that there's a variety of ways that the information could get out there, but the full toolkit um, would be yeah. mainly digital, and then there would be the availability of printed copies as well. Okay, sure. thanks. Um, so I think I'll go on with the rest of, there's just a couple more slides in my presentation to finish off this discussion, and then, um, 
and then we can continue with a little bit of conversation. Um, all right, is that on my back sharing now? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so then the last two pages, I believe, of this document, let's make that a little bigger, are, um, are really kind of more about the um, financial, the budget, the budgeting of it. So this as uh, for really for reference is a snapshot showing our uh, last four years um, of in revenue to the public art fund uh, and our expenditures from the par public art fund and then what our public art fund balance has been at the end of those years. So um, the latest is our current fiscal year 21-22, which ends this July, or sorry, this June 30th is the end of our fiscal year. So you can see that these are two date numbers here, um, but it is showing currently that our fund balance is pretty healthy um, at a, a little over a million dollars. Um, there are some projects that have kind of been, um, that we are anticipating, um, but where the funds are not uh, encumbered or um, specifically set aside in contracts yet. Um, however, uh, it still it still leaves a good a good fund balance um, for us uh, for the next couple of years in terms of planning and the implementation of our strategic plan, which we knew when we adopted that, that there was going to be three years of additional cost to implement that plan and, and potentially more. So I wanted to share that. Um, and then the last page is, there we go. This is a very rough draft, uh, but a, a first attempt at a proposed annual work plan for next year. Um, and so given any feedback today, the goal would be to make any revisions needed to this and bring it back at the next meeting um, and ask the committee to approve. So the committee still does need to approve an annual work plan. However, I want to offer up that it doesn't have to look like this. And I would and, and actually like to try to find a way to layer in over this where committee members want to be more involved so that that's really in the work plan itself. And so that's something that if you have thoughts on or we could take a stab at um, accomplishing that, that's, that's definitely a goal. But this does follow essentially the same format as our last year, our current year's work plan, the format we used. Um, so the first item in the, in the annual work plan is continuing to implement the strategic plan. So everything in this number one section here is Im implementing our strategic plan. And um, the, as the plan was, was um, drafted, um, as it stated this second year of implementing the plan, that's what that planned column is. And proposed is just the slight difference that I'm, I'm pr uh, pr uh, pr uh, proposing, sorry, um, which would be to not undertake the toolkits in this next year, even though we want to, given, um, given how much we have continuing from this year. So as the very, very first slide showed, I'll go back really quick um, to the first slide. This is our, this is our you know, progress report on implementing our current year's worth of, annual, of strategic plan. Uh, tasks. And you can see we're, we're chipping away at it, but it's, it's slow going. So given that we're kind of going to need to be continuing some of these things, um, that's what's leading into the recommendation to not undertake the toolkit. Um, however, I feel like it can be something that if we have the capacity for, we, we can start uh, undertaking it. It's just, a, it's just a matter of looking at all the things that are kind of on our to-do list and realizing that if we keep adding new things, we, we really will just keep adding to a long list and it's not going to get shorter. So um, so anyway, that was the thought behind that. Um, and then uh, as it did, as our current uh, annual work plan showed, this has the same format in, in that the items listed in green um, are essentially additions uh, to the strategic plan budget because they were already in our budget. So to remind you that the strategic plan impl implementation budget only captured new costs that we didn't already have. And so the items in green 
show that we had already budgeted these things in our normal operating budget. And so they are um, included here for kind of to be more comprehensive. But if you were to look back at our um, actual strategic plan and you looked at fiscal year 22, 23 implementation, it would, it would be excluding these amounts. So just wanna call that out. So when you're looking, <laughs> doing your research, you'll, you'll see the difference there. Um, the, so then the, our, our, really, our annual work plan includes the strategic plan implementation as well as our continuing projects. So here under item number two, we have artists in the general plan update. Um, we have the Unum sculpture in Courthouse Square, which is scheduled to be installed pretty soon after our new fiscal year starts, but still will be continuing um, into this next year. We have our ongoing maintenance and conservation. We have the Asawa panels and we have Depot Park still as a potential project to revisit. Then we have new um, projects included here, which right now include the Highway 101 pedestrian overcrossing as you heard about earlier this spring. We also have a new public art opportunity. Um, the fire department is rebuilding, or I should say building a new fire station five to replace the fire station that did burn down in the Tubbs Fire in Fountain Grove. There's already funding dedicated for the public art component of their project from Transportation and Public Works, but it will be a project that they are asking us to manage. So, uh, so you can see that, that that's a lot, right? That's a lot in a work plan, especially since we have continuing projects that are kind of coming into this work plan. So like I said, I would like to see this include um, areas where art and public places can be involved and any other kind of nuances that you would find helpful to be captured in, the, in, a, in a work plan. Um, but that's kind of where we're at today. And so if there's any suggestions or discussion about that that I can kind of incorporate into another draft to bring back to you, that's, um, that's really what we're asking for in the discussion today. Thanks for the overview this afternoon, Tara. Uh, quick question that I had uh, as we were talking about outreach and events and the opportunity to coordinate with the city about getting like a pop-up and tables and chairs. Are, are those items something that the city already has that we could use or would we need to think about including those items in our PR and marketing budget? Yeah, that's pretty much exactly where I would pull them from. We, so we already have um, some funds dedicated for those purposes as called for in our strategic plan implementation. So I feel like um, there's, there's appropriate funding for some of those items already. It would just be dedicating them to those um, specific things. Uh, you know, the city does have um, equipment chairs, tables, pop-ups, things like that, that could be used for events. But I would suggest making sure we know what we'll need uh, and then having something like a pop-up tent branded for public art. Uh, we have some that we use for Live at Juilliard, but they say Live at Juilliard on them. So, so it, um, those are the only ones that the program specifically owns. Any other thoughts on the work plan so far? I think this is a good overview at this point. Um, but yeah, we, we could use some detailed uh, line items. Lisa, did you have any comments? I was just gonna comment the detailed line items and when should we get started and how just, I, we've talked about it, so now we just need to put action into it and go ahead and, um, start making a plan on, you know, how we're going to do this and when we're going to do this and um, what does it take and what's our next step exactly what we need to do. I have a clarification. Uh, looking at the line item underneath governance and administration, there's outsource work, work with new contractors. Uh, is, is that 
looking at costs that it would take to uh, bring new contractors under the city's kind of um, their insurance or, or um, just making sure that they are permitted to work with them. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what outsource work means in this context. Yeah, thanks. It's for positions like project managers, like David was, for instance, um, um, or consultants who are brought in specifically for some project that's more short term. Um, so they're really to help leverage the staffing, the small team we currently have with additional people who can come in and help with either a, you know, a two year limited term kind of project management uh, part time position or um, or a consultant like Nico Kimson and his firm um, Kimson Creative to come in and do specific targeted trainings or projects. So, um, so that's what that line item is for. For this next year, uh, we probably will need it for continuing to work with Nico. Uh, would be my guess. Um, it, as we have to see what his um, what his work with the uh, general plan update is going to require in terms of um, an ongoing commitment to finish out those projects as a part of that project. There's also funding available through um, the general plan updates budget for that. So that's a, that's a little bit unknown, but we do like having that line item in, line item in there. It doesn't all have to go towards one um, individual either. It could be split up amongst um, a, couple, a couple different needs that we may have. So it sounds like uh, if we take a stab at adding in an overlay about engagement and um, our in public places committee uh, being involved in specific areas related to um, uh, events, open houses, things like that, um, I think that it, it sounds like that's what what you're looking for in terms of more specific line items or what what would you be asking for for more specifics in this plan go ahead Ann. i have one question um just the whole idea of um transparency and outreach i'm seeing different things that are i'm reading it on my phone that's why i'm looking down here so um to make to make more community involvement and stuff is there ways we could um make the like summarize into so someone doesn't have to read through a huge agenda to kind of figure out what we're doing summarize things down even put them on the out there santa rosa thing like you know this is what we're dealing with like meetings this week and it's this is what the topics are i'm just saying in a sense condense down some of the information to being more attractive to someone wanting to kind of go oh i'd actually like to know more about that or i might want to be involved in that instead of it being enmeshed in a sort of having to go on a website and find an agenda. Am I making sense? Yeah, uh, it, totally. Um, we are working on adding a public art program uh, page to the Out There Santa Rosa website that would uh, capture what our current projects are, ways to um, engage opportunities um, and having upcoming meetings um, listed on there with a link on where you can get the agendas. I think uh, is it's definitely possible. It is um, definitely not an easy process uh, right. the, to, to interface with our agenda where agendas are available uh, through the city's system. So I totally hear what, hear what you're saying. I think there's yeah. a way to at least um, provide a summary of the Art Public Places Committee and when upcoming meetings are so that at least, at least that language would be more accessible. Yeah, yeah. Even I was just thinking like um, the when we're going to be showing up, when we're going to have a presence that we, in a sense, even slightly not big, you know, not a big advertisement, but like say the mural project that MJ and Joshua are doing and down in Roseland, that's kind of a big deal. And if we were flashing out that we're going to be there too, and we are involved with helping and advocating for more murals, this is where it happens, people, um, and come and talk to us. We're going to be, you know, not just be there and hope we run into some people, but actually say the intent of us to be there as well as advertising, come talk to us, come find us. This is, I don't know, mm -hmm. make it more, to actually move towards some of those objectives.
Okay, um, great. Well, if there's any other thoughts on that, reach out. Otherwise, I guess we'll bring yeah. back um, a work plan at the next meeting for the committee to adopt. Thank you, Tara. I think this is well laid out and um, it does touch on items that you know, have been incorporated into the budget previously and how we want to look going forward. And it, it does, with your explanation today, it gives us a bit of understanding of priorities and how we want to position ourselves based on staff availability and um, our own availability. So thank you. Um, sure, and just a reminder uh, to check if we have public comment before we move on. Great. Thank you, Eileen. Do we have any public comments that were submitted or any members of the public who would like to speak about this item? We have no public comment for this item, nor are there any hands raised at this time. Thank you. Great, thank you. And are there any other parting thoughts uh, about our work plan discussion? Seeing none, oh, I would like to, look like uh, Remember Nathan Adrizian is headed out, so we'll see you later. No, that was Jeff. No, um, yeah, Jeff that was Nathan Jeff. Said, sorry. sorry, I have a five o'clock, I have to go. Thanks everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, and at this point, I would like to move on to agenda item 5.3, project updates. Staff will present update on current projects for our information only today. Thank you. Hand it off to Tara. Thanks, Kristen. Um, most of the updates are going to be from Jessica today, um, but I'll just start off with the ones that I have. Um, the Art Surround project, um, which is the collaboration with Creative Sonoma. Um, artists have been selected to participate in the cohort through their selection process. Um, they're uh, from all over in Sonoma County. And then advocates from across the county, including uh, the public art program, will be meeting on June 20th to be matched with artists for projects in each of our respective jurisdictions. So that's the next step uh, in, in this project. And Jessica, if you wanna chime in and um, add anything to that, please do. And then I'll really turn over the rest of the updates to you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I don't have anything to add for Arts Around, um, but we realized we wanted to include the updates about the art exhibits in these project updates, right? Is that in this part? I think so. Um, yeah, go ahead. And go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm including you to do Unum and Fifth Street Parking uh, Garage Project. Okay, got it. Thanks. Um, so at the Finley Center right now, um, we are working with the California Indian Museum and Cultural Center. So that's a really amazing exhibit to check out. And then just across the courtyard is the person senior wing. And right now, um, Becoming Independent is showing there. So both of those shows are up through the end of July. Um, and then for Unum, we're really starting to just, are still trying to nail down our installation date, which we're hoping to shoot for September, mid-September. So that's where we're at with that. Um, live at Juilliard, we did announce the six bands and I'll put them all in an email to everyone just so you have those. And finally, Fifth Street, as some of you are saying, we are wrapping up hopefully by the end of today or at the very latest tomorrow. Um, and we have not decided on a dedication ceremony time yet, but I'll let you know as soon as we have that. Um, I do have some photos of the mural in progress that I'll share. They're just on my desktop, so I'm gonna share my screen and then hit them on my desktop. Um, Eileen, can you make it uh, so that I'm able to share the screen? Please? You should be able to now. I just changed oh, it. Sorry, it was Tara. Got it. Uh, so this is from the very beginning. 
when they were just doing sort of the mock-up and the um, the points where they're gonna settle. This is, you can kind of see the doodle project or the doodle um, lines. And then I have a couple from very recently. This is just, I think, Friday. And then our very last one, um, they, they put the face in last. So I haven't been over there today, but today was, they were doing final touches. So this is what it looked like Saturday night. And they, or, yeah. Those are the only photos I've got for now. Thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah. So either Jessica and I can answer any questions about any of those, um, but those are just the quick updates we have today. Great, thank you for sharing those progress photos. It has been a lot of fun to see that mural being installed over the last week. So appreciate you giving an update to our committee. All right. And moving on to item, oops, sorry, do I need to take public comment for project updates? Uh, no, you don't need to do that for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have committee reports. Uh, do any of our task forces have an update that they would like to give an update about? Sorry for being repetitive. <laughs> task force updates, if there are any. Does anyone on our committee have uh, an announcement about an event that they are attending or looking forward to uh, in the next couple of months? I did quickly speak about the art, or sorry, the Railroad Square Music Festival. Uh, if you are all available to attend, I hope you will. It's a completely free event and it will be taking place on Sunday throughout Railroad Square, uh, noon, to set, noon to 8.30 p.m. So hope to see you all there. Hi, Nate, you had a, you had oh, a comment? Uh, yeah, um, there's a, an opening at uh, Escalar of um, Anna Betbees and Kay Castagnetto. Um, and that's gonna be a really interesting show. That's on Saturday the 11th from five to 10 p.m. If anyone's interested, I sent the email to Tara, so maybe you could forward it. Thanks. Great, thanks for the update. All right, and that concludes our item seven department, oh, sorry, and then moving to department reports. Uh, city staff provide a briefing on issues of interest. Do we have any updates on department reports? I didn't have any on my list for today, Race, Is there anything that you can think of for department reports? No, nothing to report. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, do we have any items to discuss for future agenda items? We have an ongoing list. And I think that that would tie nicely in with our budget discussion or our work areas. Um, but I do not have any other items to put on our future agendas. Lisa, you're on mute, Lisa. Oh, there we go, sorry about that. Just the one that I just wanted to reiterate and we were discussing earlier, but um, in regards to being present at um, community events and programs, um, I definitely think that's a step in the right place to support the community is by just being present at those programs and events that go on. So yeah. 
just wanted to emphasize on that one. <laughs> I'm grateful that we have more opportunities to show up and uh, there's more events happening at this point. So I, I look forward to attending more events going forward. Tar, did you have anything else to add? No, that's it. All right. Well, our next meeting, we will need to look out for a um, special meeting. Uh, the next regularly scheduled meeting would have been on July 4th, but that is canceled because it is a holiday. So everyone enjoy. And uh, we will keep in touch about our next meeting. And at this time, I would like to join. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.